Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. Welcome to our 262nd installment of the Torah portion of the week. We are holding by Parsha Shlach for everyone um, outside of Eretz Yisrael. Uh, it's Parsha Shlach, all about the sin of the spies. Um, plenty, plenty there uh, about that. I already made a video a number of years ago about what's going on with the spies. And then, and then you have, what else we have over here? We got the libations. We have atonement in public for idol worship, individual idol worship, Sabbath desecration, sitzis, a lot to speak about um, over here. So the Torah tells me, Torah tells me, chapter 15, verse 23. Torah tells me that everything Hashem has commanded you through Moses from the day that Hashem commanded on, onward throughout your generation, right? We're talking about over here, talking about idol worship and how bad, how bad idol worship is. So says Moira Rebbe, says Moira Rebbe, a rabbi going to Moshe Storm Machlita, he should be well. And he brings down a Tom Vidas. And he says like this, he says, even someone... Even someone who transgresses the prohibition of idolatry, even by accident we know idolatry, one of the seven no idol laws, right? Certainly many times Torah says, can't worship idols. But he says, even if you do it by accident, this is how severe it is. Even if you do it by accident, it's as if you deny the entire Torah. Why? Why, essentially, is idolatry so bad? Right? That's the question. Why is it so bad? So he says, he says, belief in God, belief and faith in one God, right, that created the world, divine providence, is in charge of everything, nothing's outside of him, like the Rambam says, in the beginning of the first, the, the beginning of the 13 principles, God is absolute, God is unique, he doesn't change, it's a fundamental principle over here, belief in God. Right now, what's the problem here? He says, since belief in God's fundamental principle, and someone who has doubts and thoughts and, you know, they have, let's say, a crisis of faith. They have a crisis of faith. You know, a person goes through a hard time. You know, a loved one dies, you know, suffers, whatever. Crisis of faith, let's say somebody has. There's my Rebbe over here. There's a doubt. What's their doubt as well? Their doubt as well is in the fact that God established the world. And that's whatever. We don't need mitzvahs or there aren't mitzvahs or whatever the case is. Huge thing over here. Huge thing. Because people can ask, okay, why does God care if people worship idols? Like, what's the big deal? They want to worship idols, their choice, right? Everyone has free choice. But why is it one of the big three that if a Jew and Andrew put a gun to a Jew's head and say, I want you to bow down to this guy in the stick, reverence the JC or a short little fat guy, Mr. Buddha himself, say, bow down or die, you have to be willing to die. Why is it so severe? Because we understand, my Rebbe here says, that idolatry, a person who believes in idols, it's like you deny God. It's like you deny establishment of the world. That's how bad it is. But he goes further. Goes further over here. He says, even if a person worshipped idols by accident. Normally we say you do something by accident. You still have to bring a sacrifice. 100% you have to bring a sacrifice. At the same time, Right, you have to bring a sin offering. But here for idolatry. Right? The sin is so severe. It's like you deny God, you deny he runs the world. You deny the Torah itself. And I told you deny mitzvahs. So idolatry takes God out of the picture. Takes the fact that there is a creator. Now, a lot of people made a mistake, huge mistake. And they thought, well, God is so lofty, maybe just created the world disappeared. Right? He gave power to other things. 
But see, nothing's outside of God. Nothing has power outside of Him. If nothing has power outside of Him, so you're putting power into something that doesn't have power. What do we call that in the vernacular? Idolatry. Right? That's what it is. It's idolatry. So somebody who who even goes down that path, even by accident, is pretty severe. And it's like you deny the entire Torah. Because there's nothing more important to Judaism than belief in God. And belief in one God and that it absolutely doesn't change divine providence. Runs the world. Nothing more important than the fundamental principle of Judaism. So you deny that by belief in idolatry, even by accident. Now, it doesn't mean you can't repent, but even by accident, you deny the fact that God created the world. You deny essentially, you deny creation. You deny prophecy. You deny giving of the Torah Mount Sinai. Giving over the mitzvahs. You deny the whole thing. That's what you deny over here. That's why it's bad. That's why there are a number of verses. Verse after verse. Tells me not to worship idols. Not to make idols. Not to bring them into my house. Because essentially you, you worship idols even by accident. You deny God. 100% you deny God. That's bad. We understand that's bad. But do we understand how bad it is? Do we understand even by accident you deny God the fact that he created the world? I don't even take it a step further. What if a person in their mind, they don't say it. They don't say it verbally. What if a person in their mind says, this is my God? They say, J.C. is my God. Muhammad is my God. Show what a fat guy is my God. They say it in their mind, not verbalized. Now you got to tell me, isn't there a Talmudic principle? Devarim should believe in or devarim. Words of my heart mean nothing. True? For most things, that's true. Person says this, even though it's in your mind, huge prohibition. I, I didn't say it, I thought it, or a person, not me, somebody thought it. Huge problem. Here, he did it willingly. My here says, did it by accident. But even doing it by accident, no free lunch. You deny God runs the world. You deny the Torah. You deny everything. It's pretty bad. That's why it's so bad over here. And if a person has doubts, they have doubt and belief in God, well, essentially they deny He created the world. Essentially, they deny Torah mitzvahs. They deny the whole thing. That's bad. But here, what are we saying? It's not just, well, I don't know if God, there's a God, whatever. You're putting stock in something that doesn't have any power. When you put stock in something that has no power, what happens? Even by accident, you deny God. You take God out of the picture. That is pretty bad. And that's why the Torah, the Torah says in the Ten Commandments, God says, I am the one who created the world. Sorry. I'm the one who took, I am the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt. Right? Next command, don't have any idols before me. Don't have any other gods before me. Because if you have any other gods or you put power into something that has no power, you deny me. You deny creation. You deny Torah. You deny mitzvahs. You deny the whole thing. So, 
the verse, Anochi Hashem Elokecho, chapter 20, verse 2. That I am the Lord your God took you out of the house of bondage. Took you out of Egypt. What do we understand? We understand that that's a command for belief in God. That's the command. But you know what? What are some people going to say? Some people are going to say, you got to have faith. Got to have faith. No. We believe with knowledge. Faith is for the Christians. Faith is for other religions. We believe with knowledge. Now, someone's going to say, you got proof? Oh, there's ample proof. There's ample proof that there's a God who created the world. Now I know, because we live in a world of design. Right? Abraham at the age of three or the age of 40. Everyone else wore worshiping idols. You know, everyone had their pocket god. Here's Bob. Don't leave home without him. Right? Everyone had their pocket gods. And Abraham said, I know God exists because I know there's a world of design. Because I know there are things out there humans couldn't have made. Look at nature. Look at the human body. Look at the fact how the earth turns on its axis. Doesn't get too close to the sun or too far away. Otherwise, either we'd be incinerated or we'd be frozen. Or I'd be frozen thunder like Pluto. Even though Pluto got the mode of the planet. No matter. There's a lot of proof. There's a lot of proof. So, if there's a creator, and again, I did this on Tanakh Talk, a lot of different ways to prove God's existence, either sociologically, morally. You know, I have to look over there, listen to those videos over there. But the point is, there's ample proof. But then someone could say, okay, let's say, let's say I agree. Let's say I agree there's a creator. Who's to say I have to keep Torah mitzvahs? Who's to say the Torah is true? Oh, that's a good question also. We can deal with that. There's inherent proof in the Torah. Yeah, we're not going to go through it. You have to watch those videos. But there's inherent proof. You have to look. But you have to be open-minded enough to think. Does this make sense? You know, one example. You would think Moshe Rabbeinu was Dr. Doolittle, right? He could play with the animals. Meaning, Torah tells me in a few places the laws of conscience. Which animals are allowed to eat, not allowed to eat? But if it's got split hooves and it chews its cut, can eat it. If it doesn't, that's one or the other. Signs, you can't eat it. By animals. Now, there are only a handful of animals the Torah tells me that do one or the other. Either it's got split hooves but doesn't chew its cud, or it chews its cud but doesn't have split hooves. There are only a handful. Now, how many species of animals are out there? Thousands? Millions? How did Moshe Rabbeinu know that? You travel all over the world. You know how much money personnel would take? Go all over the world. Check out all the animals. How would he know such a thing? Take it one step further. Torah tells me a fish that's kosher has scales and fins. Meaning if it has scales, it has fins. If it has fins, it has scales. You're not going to find a fish, that's an exception, that has scales and not fins. You won't find it. How did Moshe Rabbeinu know? How many species, tens of millions of species of fish in the sea? person can't know that. Given other information. Who gave him the other information? God himself. That's the only way. Where else to get the information from? But what's the question people are going to ask? They're going to say, well, even if there's a creator, good. You prove me there's a creator. You prove there's a world of design. How do I know that the toe is true? So we just gave a couple examples. But if there's a creator, doesn't he want something from who he created? But most people don't care. That's the problem. They just say, I want to do what I want to do. I don't care if you can prove it or not. I'm not changing. Okay, kind of defeatist attitude. But that's the reality. 
They're not going to change. Right? But well, what's the point? The point over here is that if I take God out of the picture and I give something power it doesn't have, again, it doesn't just mean an idol. It could be sports. It could be entertainment. You know, money. Whatever it is that you give something power it doesn't have, that's idolatry. Food. <laughs> Food can certainly be idolatry. That being said, that takes God out of the picture. Not only does it take God out of the picture, but if I do it by accident, you're toast. You deny God. You deny the Torah. You deny everything. That's why idolatry is so severe. And that's why God cares. And he's so angry when there's idolatry. So if that would be the case, why do you allow people to do it? Because he gave people free will. We have free choice. By having free choice, we can, we can choose to go the wrong way. Certainly can. Is that what God wants? No. But if God wanted robots, he's got plenty in the world. Plants, animals, they're all programmed DNA. They can't go outside of what they want to do. God's in control. But he had to create somebody or something that can know how to make decisions, good decisions, bad decisions, and have that free will. So it needs to be a mixture, body and soul. What's the only combination in the world that has body and soul is humans? Animals have a soul, animalistic soul. That's it. They don't have the spiritual soul. Plants. Trees, dirt, other things. They only have what they have. They don't have what we have. So we have the ability to raise ourselves to higher levels or God forbid not. God forbid the other way. Go in and go in according to our own desires. See, but this is very severe. Very, very severe. Deny God. You deny runs the world. You deny Torah. You deny mitzvah. So what's the novelty here? What's the novelty my Rebbe here brings out? The novelty is if you do it by accident. You can repent. There's repentance over here. You can still repent. But he's telling you the severity of what's done. Even by accident. Can't make excuses. Because even if it did it by accident, <laughs> the repercussions are unbelievable. It's a major tenet of Judaism. Believe in one God and he runs the world. Idolatry by accident denies all that. Takes God out of the picture. You take God out of the picture, you give something power it doesn't have. What do we call that in the vernacular? We said it's called idolatry. Idolatry, many, many prohibitions that the Torah says can't even bring it into your house, even if you don't worship it. Severe, very, very severe. One of the most severe laws we have. And it's so severe, my Rebbe says, even if you do it by accident. Even by accident. You say, okay, wasn't paying attention, should have this, should have that. This is much more severe. Much more severe. Because essentially you're denying God over here. So you can't say, wow, I did it by accident. Uh, I did it by accident. We have to be careful what we do. We have to be careful what we think, what we say. And even a person, quote unquote, slip of the tongue. Yeah, it can be pretty severe. Right? And so, so life is all about what? Pay attention. We got to pay attention to life. You don't pay attention to life, life passes you by and you transgress all these things and God forbid, lose your portion in the world to come. I remind everyone I have class and duties of heart every Sunday, i uh, sorry, every Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Sunday, Book of Leviticus chapter 16, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 o'clock Israel Time. Um, no High Nations, 2.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 
9.30 Israel time on Sunday. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, two Q and I do a QA, 10 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Israel time. Tanakh talk every Thursday, um, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Perke Avos, Ethics for Our Fathers, every Saturday, 2.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 Israel Time. I have conversion classes. Anyone interested in any of this, find me on Facebook at Beyond Orthodox Conversion Judaism. You can send me an email, rabbichaimkoffman at gmail.com, R-A-B-B-I-C-H-A-I-M-C-O-F-F-M-A-N at gmail.com.